aging face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome to a new series on my channel called The Weather Wars. And it's a um, short series. We're gonna go over, of course, the four weather conditions in, of course, Pokemon Sun and Moon. And if you guys have been following me, of course, on Twitter, know that I've been asking a lot of questions about weathers recently, and actually wanted to make a video with that in mind, clearly, since, you know, <laughs> here we are, right? And uh, I made a poll, you know, which one was the worst, and then, of course, to the best, and it actually came down to that sun was deemed the worst weather condition this generation. Now, having that said, it's not a bad weather setting by chance, but there are a lot of things not working with course the sun in motion in mind. And I am actually, even with this poll in mind, I do actually agree with it. Sun is one of those weather conditions which doesn't benefit too many things. Yes, fire Pokemon does get a reduction of course the water-based damage. Hell, water-based damage overall gets reduced, but they are clearly ones that benefit from it. And of course, they boost the fire damage output of, of course, any fire-based attacks. There are benefits to go in here. There also are a few abilities which definitely works in mind, which makes a few Pokemon a lot better than they recently are. But having that said, there aren't really that many changes made to it. Now, of course, before going into the individual setters in mind, let's look, of course, onto their abilities that, are, of course, are beneficial in a sand environment. So the first ability we're going to talk about is, of course, solar power. Now, solar power is basically a 50% booster special attack in the sun while you're losing 10% of your HP. So there are a lot of, of course, races with this in mind. There also are a lot of, well, disadvantaging when, of course, this in motion. Now, having that said, there aren't that many Pokemon learning it. Of course, the one standing out is, of course, Charizard. Uh, the other one is Houndoom, which clearly, you know, benefits properly from it. They have a proper special attack. Uh, Hill is definitely one of them, though it has better abilities. And also, uh, Tropius and Sunflora gets it, and trust me, you know, that's just one of those, you know, fun for you. But clearly, they can't necessarily utilize it all too well. Houndoom probably is the only one that I would say are worth using with Solar Power in mind, mainly because you're forced to, but also that it has, of course, the damage output and speed to do that well. The reason Charizard shouldn't be considered is because, well, it has a Mega, of course, Pokemon, which are only one, they're the only one worth using anyway. The second ability is actually Chlorophyll, and there really aren't that many things going on with Chlorophyll in mind. And um, I don't know why I have, of course, Venusaur here with without Chlorophyll. Venusaur gets Chlorophyll. Uh, chlorophyll, of course, benefit the Pokémon such in a way that you get to double the speed as long as Sun is going on. Now, having that said, all Chlorophyll user has one big, well, disadvantage against them, and there is a there are. All, all of them are weak to sun or, you know, fire based damage, I guess you'd say. Which, holding these Pokemon down actually quite a lot and could be quite dangerous to use with that in mind. Though Venusaur is definitely one of the better ones with, of course, base 80. Then got Valplume, Victory Bell is definitely a good one. And, of course, Executor, which also gets Harvest. Now, like stated, these Pokemon are fairly slow and barely benefit from it. But double the speed is good for them. Like I said... Venusaur stands out a little bit more due to, of course, it being fast enough to utilize that really well. Uh, and the next, speed, next, p next page, we're gonna see, of course, Belossum, uh, clearly, and of course, Jump Love, which definitely needs that, right? Sunflora gets it, uh, Shift Tree, probably one of the few that are really good with it, with, of course, a combination of Grow, which, of course, uh, well, raise your special attack and attack by two during the sun. So, that is definitely one of the better ones. And, of course, you know, Sucker Punch and stuff like that. Shift Tree has a lot of. Momentum gaining combined with, of course, chlorophyll ability. So that is, well, I say it's probably one of the more dangerous Pokemon with that in mind. And then, of course, we've got Cherubi, which, nay. And then, of course, Tangro, we're going to get it with, of course, Tangela. Um, I do believe Tangro could utilize chlorophyll really well, but it's definitely not the best ability for it, mainly because of um, Regenerator. Uh, Regenerator, of course, such a good ability that at least outshines chlorophyll in any sense of imagination. Though, you know, these are kind of decent. Like I said, Shift 3, probably with one standing out here. And on the last page, we're just going to continue with all the grass mods. We have Belief, you know, we definitely can utilize it with 95 base speed. Uh, Livani, which, if it moves, but wasn't that bad. It probably could use it really well. Uh, the reason I say this is because it's kind of niche. Uh, Whimsicott, kind of want to use it with, of course, Prankster in mind, but it gets it. 
Uh, Lilligant, same situation as uh, Livany. Good ability and bad move pool. Uh, Maractus, okay. <laughs> and I've got Source Bug, which actually could benefit well from it with the combination of Life Orb. Definitely one of the few standout Chlorophyll Sweeper. But as you guys see here, they are all weak to fire based damage, which means that they're all grass types in general. And it just, it's tough using that in mind. You know, Chlorophyll Sweepers are very tough to use when they are so easy to KO in return if they don't have necessarily damage output, which not all of them actually do. So, with that said, let's go over what you guys voted. Who is the best Sunsetter in Sun and Moon? And with 4 9 votes, clearly not you know, a lot of votes really, but Shards of Wine did win, and Ninefills not even close, and Torkoal actually got a lot of votes. And uh, Shards of clearly got over 50%, it should get over 50%. It is, in my honest opinion, the best weather, weather setup for, of course, the Drought in mind. Now, we're gonna go over them one by one. Um, Torkoal is probably one I would set as the worst weather set of myself. Mainly because while it does get Shell Smash, which clearly would have been awesome, but of course Solar Beam and stuff in mind, and Solar Beam don't need recharging, of course, Sun. The issue is that it's not fast enough. Base 20 speed makes sure that after one Shell Smash, you could outspeed base 80 Pokemon. That's about it. It's That's not a good speed. <laughs> that's, that's awful. And while I know I'm saying this, I, I know we get Rapid Spin, I know we get Self Proc, that's a lot of supporting moves, but is that what you want out of your Sun Pokemon? We already stated that there are only so many benefactors to having Sun in mind, and one of them should definitely be your damage output is really high. And while it actually has a good special attack and attack, or above average, I could say, uh, it still lacks the speed to pull that out properly, and I do believe it's very, very easy to get forced out. Now, I don't believe Torkoal is necessarily bad, but Game Freak should have gone the extra mile here. There are a lot of things that make Torkoal less viable. If you get Drought, why not push the Ponders a little bit? Why not make it slightly better? Uh, definitely having, of course, a race to 40 base speed might actually have been benefiting for it. That would have meant a Shell Smack would have been viable. It's not at this point, and that's why I would deem it the worst out of the setters. And then we have Ninetales. Ninetales is also one of those Pokemon that it just isn't strong enough. I mean, if you want to have the course of Sun in mind, you want to have, of course, that capability of doing massive damage output. Of our Fire Blast does sting with, of course, a 50% boost of the Sun. 81 Special Attack is definitely not it. Uh, Nidals does get access towards a nasty plot, and uh, that definitely could push it a little bit, but does lack the defensive and recovery to pull it off in the long run, which makes it a very, very hard setup sweeper to make, of course, in mind. Even with Nasty Plot, it basically just hits slightly harder than, of course, the bigger brother we're gonna compare it to soon. And that's that's not good. That's a waste of a turn and a waste of sun that you're not gonna utilize, of course, in his favor. And Idol probably would have been a little bit better had it gotten the likes of Morning Sun. Uh, it doesn't get that, doesn't get any recovery whatsoever, do believe us a wrist. So it's kind of tough to use. And as I said here, the damage output just isn't there. And it's you want it to have be an emotion, with, of course, is in mind. Now, with that said, Nightles is speedy, which is definitely why we raise it above, of course, Torkoal. It does mean that your Lease will be able to have a damage output, and you could use, like, a Specs and, of course, Scoff to even further on beyond that, actually get more damage output from your Nightles. But it's very unfair to compare, of course, Nightles to, of course, the best Trot user, which, of course, is the big brother and that really, really small creature that I have up there. And that is Shards on Y. Now, Shard Wars Shard Y has one big issue. It's four times weak to rocks. That is mainly gonna be making it, of course, very hard to switch in and out on. Uh, having that said, it get Roost, which I do believe is one of the more usable moves for it because it, it definitely has some extra bulk onto it to get a raise in a special attack, which makes it really, really well of taking on, of course, the likes of, of course, special base water moves, with, of course, Sun in mind. And then we got, of course, Solar Beam. Dragon Pulse or Earthquake, how you want to view it, and of course Fire Blast. Uh, it gets all the moves that the other gets, but has a, a massive damage output. And while the Sun only lasts 5 turns, instead of course the others lasting of course 8 turns with Heat Rock, Sharsa doesn't necessarily need more. And as stated before, as a Sun user, as a Sun benefiter, you kind of just want to be direct. You don't necessarily need to have 
a lot of turns with, of course, the sun, mainly because, as I said before, chlorophyll users mainly are Pokemons that fall to the sun itself. It might as well be very well worth it, of course, Shards of White have the damage I put directly and becomes one with the sun instead. So while it doesn't get no speed rates or any, of course, extra damage I put out, of course, the stab fire, it still is probably one of the best setters in mind, mainly because the damage I put just is so extreme with Shards of White. Having that said, the reasons we're gonna put, of course, Sun as the worst um, well, weather condition in mind is because there are only so many things you can do with it. While the things it can do are really good, there are greater variety in the other tree, which is the reason we're gonna deem, of course, like I said here, it's the worst weather condition of this generation. Doesn't mean it's bad though, It's uh, which are just as a standalone Pokemon, it's superb, it's one of the most scariest Pokemon you can deal with, and the sun just makes it that much more ferocious. I do believe Shard of Y would have been, you know, without the sun, a force to be reckoned with, but now we have, of course, that extra damage I put, which just makes that Pokemon insane. And, of course, it can utilize the sun to the others without, of course, risking the synergy of the, the team itself. So Shard of Y is a standalone Pokemon, it's a superb one, and yeah, I find it very scary. Uh, but with that said, that's the first part done, guys. I hope you guys appreciate this episode. If you have, of course, a different opinion about Sun, do tell me about it. I do believe I missed out on a few abilities, such as Harvest, I'm going to order that a little more. But what I'm trying to say is that there are really not a lot of things that would benefit, of course, Sun in motion, which is why it's deemed the worst. Does this mean it's bad, though? The things that are good with the Sun are really good. So, with that said, guys, thank you, of course, so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with, of course, the next episode. And you guys have just have to, of course, guess which one that's gonna be. So with that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.